when scrolling through the countless app stores, you have thousands of games ready to be purchased at just the touch of a finger. What would you choose to buy with all this power at your fingertips? Will it be the new Call of Duty game, or what about trying out the latest NBA 2K game? Whatever you choose, there's always the possibility of regretting whatever you purchase, and with the hefty prices of the games, it'll likely leave a hole in your pocket no matter what you choose to buy. But what if I told you there was a monthly subscription where you could play hundreds of games and just uninstall a game when you were finished with it? This is the main idea of the Xbox Game Pass, one of Xbox's best-selling services. This ingenious strategy revolutionized how we purchase and play video games, and in this video I'll be discussing how the Game Pass rose to prominence. After the horrendous launch of the Xbox One in late 2013, Xbox was put in a pinch as they were getting tons of negative press. In order to try and right the ship, Don Matrick was replaced by Phil Spencer as the head of the Xbox brand. Matrick had primed the Xbox One as more of an entertainment hub rather than one centered around the main usage of the console, which is gaming. The ship was rapidly sinking, and Spencer had to act fast if he wanted to save the branding of the Xbox and try and keep it in competition with the PlayStation. The first of his ideas was a video game rental service. This project attempted to mimic popular services like Netflix and Spotify, but in the realm of gaming. This project, codenamed Arches, would eventually be renamed Game Pass, as Xbox's parent company Microsoft was attempting to develop their cloud-based services under their CEO Satya Nadella. Spencer's second idea involved the video game developer Rare, which had been acquired by Microsoft in 2002. During the 15-year partnership, Xbox and Rare developed the revolutionary system of the Xbox Kinect, a focal point of the Xbox 360 experience, and produced noticeable titles such as Kinect Sports and Killer Instinct. These experiences ultimately led Rare to develop a game initially called Rare Next, but was later renamed to Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves was going to act as a major testing point in the overall reception of the Xbox Game Pass, just as Kinect had been in 2010, and with the Game Pass nearing beta testing, it was announced that Sea of Thieves would be the first first-party game available through the service. Game Pass was released to a select few on the 28th of February 2017, for testing and feedback, but was later released to the public on June 1st. The Game Pass would go through about half a year with little changes being made to the overall structure, but on the 23rd of January 2018, Microsoft would announce an expansion of the service, which would include Sea of Thieves, Crackdown 3, State of Decay 2, and Forza Horizon 4, all being available to subscribers on the launch of the games. And then, with established titles like Gears of War and Halo having their new additions added to Game Pass, it was gaining more traction. With the increased development in the cloud services of Microsoft, Spencer stated, We want to bring Game Pass to any device that somebody wants to play on, not just because it's our business, but really because the business model allows for people to consume and find games that they wouldn't have played in any other space. After this announcement, in May 2019, Microsoft would announce that the Game Pass was being ported to the PC and, with it, hundreds of games from Microsoft Studios, but also games from third parties as well. Partnered with the release of a new subscription tier, Game Pass Ultimate, the PC port, would ultimately be included along with the console subscription for $15 a month. However, Microsoft was not satisfied with just console and PC ports as they lusted for more. Ultimately, this would result in xCloud, which allowed Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers to access cloud gaming on Android and iOS devices, as well as in the browser of Windows and Mac OS devices. This full integration with the cloud allowed users to effectively play Game Pass games from anywhere and made the Ultimate tier that much more appealing. However, it was about to get a lot more appealing as Microsoft's partnered with EA to bring EA Play, EA's version of a video game streamer, to Game Pass Ultimate. This much value for only $15 a month is entirely unheard of, and in response to developers' concerns about the profits of the service, Spencer stated that the current pricing model is completely sustainable. The growth of Game Pass is truly astonishing, as it's grown from a platform that offers just Xbox Studio games into a service that provides games from Bandai Namco, 2K games, WB games, as well as Capcom. But with such an affordable plan, were the profits as sustainable as Spencer made them seem? During a Q3 earnings call in April of 2020, investors were quite skeptical of the service as a whole. But when it was revealed that Xbox Game Pass had over 10 million paying subscribers, it reassured investors about Spencer's trust in the process. Since this astonishing reveal, 
Game Pass has continued to rise dramatically in subscribers as it hit 15 million users in September 2020, 18 million by January 2020, and in January 2022, it reached 25 million paid users. This means that the revenue is at a base amount of $250 million per month, and this isn't even accounting for users who pay for the ultimate tier. However, the profits don't just stop there, as in 2021, it had been reported that Xbox had made $2.9 billion from subscribers, which have likely greatly increased since. With Xbox as a whole earning about $16.28 billion of revenue, this likely means that Game Pass subscribers made up nearly 20% of total revenue, and that's not even counting PC users or mobile users of the service, which increases the proportion of profits coming from the service even more. However, with such slim profit margins, this brings up the potential issue of compensation for the developers of games in the service. Spencer has stated multiple times that Xbox has a few ways of paying developers, and there's no single payback method. One method includes a flat payment to keep the game exclusively on Xbox, to pay for development costs, as well as multiple tiers of payment based on game downloads and separate monetization approaches. In the case of Paradox Interactive, Frederick Wester stated that their terms were similar to a Netflix payment model, where the developer was paid a fixed sum for their game for a set amount of time based on perceived value, rather than a per-play system commonly used by Spotify. With this fixed sum constantly flowing, it allows developers to decide on different paths for the games, like adding DLC if they knew players were enjoying the game and wanting more. Ultimately, Xbox took over the paid subscription gaming market through their risky business ventures, and in 2020 interview, Xbox's marketing director Aaron Greenberg stated, Xbox Game Pass is not necessarily meant to be profitable for Microsoft at the current time, but is designed to help draw more players to use it through word of mouth by offering a large set of features as a seemingly underpriced value. This allows them to avoid the high costs of advertising the service. These unorthodox risks allowed Xbox to possess one of the biggest subscription-based services and rise to the top of the gaming market.